Hello and welcome uh, from the Intel side to this year's IC 2020 Exhibitor Forum. My name is Stefan Gillich. I'm a director uh, for AI Go to Market for Intel uh, in EMEA. Today we will talk about an interesting topic. How can we accelerate insights? This is what we are looking for with HPC methods, with AI methods, and how can we actually combine between AI and HPC to really reach better insights for those who are looking for that from a business and from a research perspective. To do that, um, I have divided up my presentation into three parts. First part will go into a few fundamentals from the HPC and AI side. Then we will look at the AI journey. And last, uh, we'll touch on the hardware and software and solution stack uh, necessary to really uh, enable insights with AI and HPC. So let's look at AI first. Obviously, we could talk a lot about what AI is and what is not. But in the end, as you see at this picture, it's a method, uh, amongst others, to come from data to insights. And here you can use traditional machine learning. You can use deep learning. You can combine it with traditional data analytics and advanced AI methods to come from the vast of data which is available these days for different purposes to the insights we want to see on the business, on the security side, on the operational side. So without going into too much details around machine learning and deep learning, um, those methods rely on learning from data and then applying those methods to new data to get the insights from this new data. Now, let's look at what this is really about, uh, the combination of AI and HPC. So as we have seen, uh, with AI, we want to get knowledge and discovery from data. So we analyze images, we analyze spoken words, written words, we analyze machine data, just to give a few examples. That is what we call the AI what. What we do in what we call high performance computing, so HPC, is modeling and simulation in scientific or in business applications. So with that method, you use physical um, algorithms, basically, to simulate physical uh, processes like the climate, like seismic analysis, but also other areas like genome sequencing or fraud detection. So it's basically a simulation of the real world on a computer. If you look at AI, how we do this, we use as we have seen, classical machine learning, we use deep learning with neural networks or other more advanced AI methods. Also, new methods are researched there. In HPC, well, we use simulation. That means we use numerical applications to model these physical processes we want to use uh, to get insights. And we do this with using a lot of performance, that's why uh, we call it HPC, a lot of performance on the compute systems. So that uh, implies using a lot of memory. It implies using parallelism to be able to process those numerical calculation steps in a fast way so you actually can get accurate simulations. Now, how can we combine that? Let's have a look at this. So fundamentally, there's two methods to combine it. One is to say, OK, can I use uh, what I have been doing from an infrastructure perspective on the HPC side to power what I need on the AI side? And yes, you can do that. So you can use this approach of parallelism and a lot of memory and high throughput infrastructures to power the AI applications, whether they're using machine learning or whether they're using deep learning or other methods. And then on the other side, which is very interesting area, uh, now with a lot of developments we see in science and in uh, business, is to use AI methods, so machine learning and deep learning, to enhance the algorithms which we are using on the classical HPC side, so enhancing 
modeling and simulation by new methods which are based on AI, so-called machine learning or deep learning. Now let's look at a concrete example for that. We have been working together with CERN, the CERN Open Lab, SurfSara, to look at some of the opportunities which are provided by what I was just talking about, combining simulation with machine learning, or in this case, using machine learning with so-called 3D GANs, 3D generative adversarial networks as a sub-method of AI, right? And it's, a, it's a deep learning method uh, to uh, combine it with the traditional simulation method, which is used to model complex physics and uh, geometries in the research work uh, CERN is doing in so-called particle detectors. And they use the simulation now uh, in parallel with the um, methods which are described here, the deep learning uh, methods, where they use so-called 3D GANs. And there's two things which we can see here. So one is that with this method, they can actually come to a result faster in terms of using the 3D GANs to also uh, replace part of the Monte Carlo simulations they need to use. And on the other side, we see um, in this solution uh, or in this proof of concept, which we have been doing with Hearn and Surfsara, that you actually can use the underlying hardware, which they have been using for simulations, so the HPC hardware, also for doing the machine learning they do with the so-called 3D GANs and use it in a very efficient way so that they actually can scale up with high efficiency to a high number of nodes to get the respective performance they need to use the uh, machine learning methods here as well. So it's a perfect example to show uh, what you can actually do in combination between AI and HPC to advance science, in this case, to a higher stage. Now let's look a little bit on the AI side, right, to learn a few fundamentals which are basic for some of the further points I want to make in this presentation. If we look at bringing AI solutions together, like the one we, I've been uh, talking about concretely with CERN, there's usually four steps. It's obviously a little bit simplified, but there's four steps which we look at for those solutions. The first step is the discovery phase where the developers are actually looking together with the scientists or with a business department on what is actually possible, uh, what uh, we want to achieve. Then a very important step is the data step where we need to look at what data is available, where is it located, how much data do I have, and how clean is that data. For instance, if I have pictures as data, are they actually looking at the right features which I want to analyze, or is the data exact enough, and which data can I use then in the next step to develop the AI algorithm, which we also call training in the case of deep learning. So this step is very important. In a, a concrete example, we have seen that actually the second step here, the data step, was consuming as much resources in terms of time and effort than the third step, which is actually the development step for developing uh, the AI applications. If you use deep learning, this is what we call training. So we use data which is labeled, for instance, to train a neural network. Uh, which then can be used uh, for new data to find the features and uh, the insights we want to get from this data. So this is what we do in the development step. This involves experimenting with so-called topologies, so different types of neural networks, and then obviously train them and test them. Once we have done that and we are satisfied, then we can move to the deployment step. In the case of deep learning, this is what we call inference, where we actually use the trained neural network to analyze new data and get, uh, obviously, the insights we want to get from this new data. So these are the four fundamental steps uh, in bringing up an AI-based solution. Now, 
I've talked about this uh, to show you a little bit more on the hardware and software stack we have been working on to support this AI journey. So again, we have those four steps. And what we are doing from our side is we're supporting those four steps with three pillars of technology and uh, solutions which we're working on. So the first step is the hardware, obviously. We need to have uh, underlying compute hardware to run this AI analysis on. Obviously, hardware is nothing without software, so we're working very heavily on that as well. And last but not least, we're also helping on the solution side so that end users, scientists, and business users can actually bring solutions together. Now let's look on what this means concretely, right? You see a number of technologies, a number of efforts which we have put into this, which we are working on to support the users to really be able to use AI efficiently in those four steps. On the hardware side, we're obviously providing processing hardware. So this is a central processing unit CPUs, for instance, the, the Xeon processor, but also specialized uh, hardware uh, building blocks which can be used as specific hardware which uh, has certain properties like low power consumption or very high performance on a specific uh, workload like accelerators for uh, the fundamental steps in deep learning, training and inferencing. Uh, this is technology where, which we're working on um, with a recent acquisition we have been doing, Habana Labs. And we're also working on a discrete GPU technology, XE technology, which is supporting both HPC as well as AI applications in an efficient way. We also have to move data around and store data, obviously, for AI. So we're working on and having a number of products which are actually supporting the efficient storage uh, and access of data and the efficient movement of data between systems and between data centers and potentially the edge where I collect data. Let's look at the software. So basically that hardware needs to run efficiently to provide the end users with the performance and the capabilities needed. In AI, many people are using so-called deep learning frameworks. For instance, if you're, they are using deep learning and they're using this level of interface, right? And what we are working on from our side is to enable that with optimizations um, on uh, the software side, on the software stack, optimize libraries to enable that performance which end users need. On top of that, we're also working on tools which support the developers to get their solutions together. For instance, Analytics Zoo, which provides pre-configured setups to make the development faster, pre-configured models, for instance, for uh, doing the uh, uh, learning phase and uh, supporting uh, AI applications. One other thing I want to mention here is the Open Reno Toolkit, which can be used to accelerate the uh, deployment phase, so inferencing on uh, different hardware platforms. Let's look at the solution side. Here we're working, for instance, with the ecosystem um, in the uh, so-called Intel AI Builder program to really put solutions together between, uh, for instance, software vendors or integrators of solutions which are using the hardware and software stack, which I was just talking about. And obviously, the hardware and software stacks and solution stacks are also available by certain cloud service providers. This is just a few examples. Now let's look at few aspects specifically in uh, this AI and HPC convergence area. If you look at the processing platform, right, uh, I want to feature one example here, which is our second generation Xeon processor. Why am I doing this? Because this is actually designed for convergence in a way that we have integrated specific technology to run AI workloads very efficiently with uh, the so-called Intel Deep Learning Boost, which is a technology uh, which enhances the inference step of deep learning in a way that it makes it more efficient. I'll uh, talk about details uh, in the next slide. 
But why does this matter? Well, many people, as we have seen uh, in the HPC world, have already deployed Xeon processors, and they have deployed Xeon processors of this generation, which has Deep Learning Boost technology. So they can go ahead and use this infrastructure to run AI workloads now without a new hardware investments, run them optimized, and actually uh, have a higher productivity um, in using both AI as well as uh, traditional simulation applications on the same infrastructure. So this is an implementation of the principle I was speaking about before in terms of running AI on HPC infrastructure. Let's look at the details of that a little bit, right? How do we achieve that? So the deep learning boost technology is basically solving this problem by optimizing the way how low integer precision uh, operations are handled. You see that on the left side of the picture here, where we basically uh, replace three steps in the instruction set with one step, and by that uh, have a more efficient uh, implementation of inference in the second generation of Xeon scale of processes. So what we deliver there is end customer value to basically accelerate the inference step for image classification and object detection or speed recognition or other AI application fields. Now let's look at the software side, which I wanted to take one example, which actually applies both to HPC and AI as well. How can we support the run of HPC applications and AI applications on different infrastructures, uh, which we're working on. I was referring to that before on the hardware side. So we were, we're having a generic CPUs with the Intel Xeon pro, uh, processor. We're working on uh, discrete GPUs. We have also FPGAs and we're, we're working on other accelerators like the Habana Labs technology I was speaking about before for specific accelerators for inferencing or training. How do we support this with the software infrastructure, which makes it easy for the end user to use these types of hardware? And what we are doing there is a cross-architecture programming model, which we call One API. And this has several elements, as you can see on the, on, on the left side, right? It contains uh, API-based programming uh, support as well as data programming support uh, with Datapel C++ so that developers of applications can actually use different interfaces and they can use them for HPC as well as for AI. And with that, we basically simplify the uh, using of different architectures for the developer in the HPC field, but also do the same for AI, basically to make the heterogeneity of the hardware not a bottleneck, but an asset and make it easy so you don't have to use different uh, ways for programming for different hardware uh, which you use on the processing side. Now let's look a little bit on the solution side. Um, how do we bring all of this together? Um, I was speaking about bringing AI applications on to HPC hardware before. So how are we supporting this uh, as an example for solutions for converged clusters? So here uh, I want to draw your attention to a concept uh, we have implemented, which is called Intel Select Solutions. There are several of these Intel Select Solutions available which actually makes it easier for the user of the technology to evaluate the right hardware and software stack for the job, to enhance the deployment by making it easier and faster, and have a op workload optimized hardware. So what does that mean for our concrete case? Well, if you go ahead and want to run AI applications on an HPC infrastructure, which are usually clusters, you need to make sure this is done seamlessly. And this is exactly what we're doing there uh, with the Intel Select solution for HPC and AI on converged clusters, also called MacPy. If you want to know more details about this, there's uh, more uh, information available if you look at the link, which is also displayed on this page. 
with that, I hope uh, I've shown you a little bit of how AI and HPC can be combined and what Intel is doing to support both areas for the success of end customers to basically come from data to insights and new discoveries by using AI and HPC combined. Thanks a lot for listening.